In this video I'm going to talk about the uh, electric guitar and I'm going to focus on some of the differences and similarities between this uh, and the acoustic guitar that I've just uh, described in another video. A lot of the stuff is very similar but um, of course there's a few things that are different on this guitar in the design of it and how it makes its sound as well. So to start with the basics, um, the three main the three main components of the guitar are the same. We've got the head, the headstock, we've got the neck, we've got the body here. So we've got the basics of the, uh, the acoustic guitar happening just the same on this guitar. So going down from the, again, from the, this end of the guitar, from the, from the headstock end to the body end, like I did on the previous video, we've got the, the tuning pegs on the headstock which we use to tune the guitar. On this guitar you might notice that I've got all of the six tuning pegs all down one side of the headstock whereas on the acoustic guitar I don't think you can see it in the in frame here but there was three on either side as you'd normally find on acoustic guitars that you will have been used to using. This is mainly a design choice this particular guitar manufacturer Ibanez or, or Ibanez They've styled the headstocks this way, um, I think in the first instance to give it a, a sleek, fast, sort of rock guitar sort of look. You also see electric guitars that have got the same arrangement as the acoustic guitar that I've just showed you. So you might find electric guitars that have got three pegs on one side, three pegs on the other side. There's a, it depends on the manufacturer and the design style of the guitar. Uh, going further down, we've got the nut, it's exactly the same as on the acoustic guitar. It's got the little grooves in for the string guides that they sit in to keep the spacing even. And also if you remember, however deep those little grooves are, that's how high the strings are off the, uh, off the fretboard. The fretboard is the same, on, the, on this one it's, it's rosewood, it's uh, stuck on the front of the neck. And that's where we actually we fret the notes the same as the other guitar. I've got my frets. Those are the same, the metal strips that go across. So all that, all that is the same. We get down to the body. Obviously the, the body's different in shape. You can see that by looking from that guitar to this guitar. Um, before I get into the shape of it, the most obvious difference in terms of uh, how it's built. This is a solid body guitar. Where's that? It's hollow bodied as I described, it's got the sound hole and the inside of it's completely hollow. This this is this is solid so there's no there's no sound hole, there's no um, there's no hollow cavity inside. I tell a slight lie, there's a there's a couple of little hollow cutouts in the back, I'll talk about that later, but for the most part, this is a solid bodied guitar. The shape of the guitar, you will see, you can see the acoustic guitar where it, the body meets the neck on the acoustic it's got nice round little curves that just go straight flat up to the neck on this guitar if you can see it's a completely different shape it's got these archy sort of shapes here these are called cutouts because the body's been cut out and contoured in that fashion why is that? well the main reason for it is to give us access for a hand to be able to reach the frets that are higher on the guitar. So on the acoustic guitar you might be able to see where the body of the guitar stops is round about the 12th fret where the double dot markers are. I'd be really struggling unless I was sort of doing this with my hand to be able to get higher up the neck. So over, over the years the, the design of the electric guitar, some more than others, have evolved to have these quite pronounced cutouts so that I can get my hand right up here to the top of the neck if I wanted to play these notes up here at the top of the neck. That's not going to affect your, your chord playing so obviously at a beginner's level you start off learning the you know the open root chords down here maybe even some bar chords. The main advantage of this is if you start playing lead guitar, solos on, um, that use higher pitch notes 
then you need to be able to get access up here to play the notes without being a contortionist and getting your hand up there. What you can't see, um, the same as on the, the other guitar, this has a truss rod in the neck to adjust the tension on the neck that's working against the, the strings pulling. On the acoustic guitar, I did say there was um, a little nut inside of the sound hole that you use to adjust it. On this particular guitar, it's adjusted at the other end of the neck. There's a little plastic cover here under the strings. It, it's quite difficult to see, I think, on the camera. I'll try and give you better if you can see that. You've whipped that cover off and there's um, a little bolt that you can use to adjust that. On um, sticking with the body of the guitar, we've got little um, little strap holders that we can use to attach a strap on the guitar. With the electric guitar, generally speaking, once you put the strap on, put it over your shoulder, if you let go of it, it will normally sit quite nicely unlike an acoustic guitar. So with electric guitar it's, it's quite happy to be held on these points with a strap. The reason for that is because we've got a solid body, we've got more weight in the body that counterbalances the weight of the neck um, on the guitar. So it's, they tend to sit, there's a few exceptions if you see some of these funny shaped guitars like a flying V-shaped guitar or some odd shaped guitars they might not balance quite as well but most guitars of this type of shape do tend to sit normally quite naturally well on a strap. So carry on down the strings we've got a bridge just like on the acoustic guitar that's the uh, where the strings meet the body at this end. You may be able to see I'll try and uh, close up a bit. On this bridge it looks like there's quite a few um, nuts and bolts and gubbins on it, a little bit more complicated than the acoustic guitar. The reason for that is um, that I can adjust the actual, um, these are called saddles on this bridge, there's one for each of the strings, I can adjust the height of the strings, that means how high they are away from the body and also behind here there's a few screws you may or may not be able to see I can bring these things backward and forward which has an effect on something called intonation. I'm not going to get into that now um, but that means that whilst we used to tune our guitar with the open strings for playing our chords and things down here we need to make sure the guitar is also in tune right up here as well so we can use that to help us make sure that we get the guitar in tune up here but um, as I said I'm not going to get too bogged down with that. Before I get into the actual electric components of the guitar, if I turn it round there's some little holes you can see here, that's where I feed the strings through, they come right through from the back to the front of the guitar, they come up through the bridge here and to the tuning pegs at the top and I tune the guitar exactly the same as if I was tuning the acoustic guitar. In terms of how the guitar produces its sound, that's the probably the major difference between the electric and the acoustic. The acoustic guitar creates vibration that resonates inside of the hollow body of the guitar and the majority of that sound comes out of the sound hole, which we don't have here. We have here. On this guitar, it's ever so slightly different. The strings still create vibration like a waveform when you pluck them. If you remember the rubber band example that I used when I was talking about that guitar, it's the same here. It creates vibration, but we don't have that big space to amplify the sound. So how do we get the sound out of this guitar? This is where these little gadgets come in. Again, I'll try and do a little bit of a close-up. I'll put it on there. So these things here, are called pickups because they literally pick up the sound from the strings. What they are are electro electric magnets um, so that when the, the metal string vibrates these electromagnets sense that vibration convert that into an electrical signal which then gets sent out down the cable to an amplifier which you can make 
as loud as you want to, which is the fun of the electric guitar. You can probably also see I've got a, a knob and a, a switch on here as well. That's something you won't find on the acoustic guitar, but it's something you'll find on, on most electric guitars. The, the knob I've got here, that's a volume knob, so if I turn it all the way anti-clockwise, assuming I was plugged in now, I'd be getting no sound through the guitar. If I turn it completely clockwise, just like on your hi-fi, I'm getting maximum volume, or as much as the guitar can put out. So, without having to go back and uh, mess with the controls on my amplifier, I can use that control to adjust the volume louder and quieter on the guitar. The switch here, I'll try and keep it as simple as possible for now, but the switch enables me to switch between these two different pickups on the guitar. Why have I got two pickups? Why would I want to do that? Why not just have one? It would be simpler. You can get guitars, some, some guitars just have one pickup and that's perfectly fine. They sound great. Um, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with those. Having two of these just gives me a little bit more flexibility on the sound that the guitar makes when it's plugged in. On a simple level, the, the pickup that's close to the bridge here, that will sound um, quite brash and um, it'll have a lot of attack and have an in your face sound to it. Whereas the pickup here that's closer to the, to the neck of the guitar will sound a bit more rounded, a bit more mellow, a little bit smoother. So depending on what style of music that you're playing or, or what type of sound that you, you, you want to achieve, you, you can choose between um, the different sounds that these pickups make. Again, that's a really, really simple explanation. Th this switch does have a few more uh, features on it than that, but that's probably for another video. Um, the, the basics are that playing a pickup up here is going to be more of a mellow, rounded sound. Um, some people say a little bit easier on the ear, not as harsh. Down here, it's going to be you know, playing your, your, your heavy metal hard rock, which I love. Um, it's going to give you that attack and uh, aggressive type sound. I'll, um, I'll plug the guitar in um, so you can have a, an idea of what that sounds like. Um, it's probably easier to hear it than uh, explain it. You might also find on, on most guitars that you've got a second knob which is a tone control. It might even be labelled on the guitar as a tone control. Um, what that does is if you back it off, if you turn it down, it uh, makes a sound again a little bit more mellow, it takes a bit of the top end and the harshness off the guitar um, and makes the sound a little bit more um, smoother um, and depending on what style of music you're playing, depending on what you want to sound like that could be useful for you. This guitar did have a tone control um, I've actually modified it to remove the tone control because I bought this specifically for playing live with a heavy metal band and the sounds that I was using, I didn't need to use the tone control and it was actually getting in the way of my picking because when, you play, when you're playing live you may find that you tend to be a little bit more aggressive with your adrenaline and putting on a bit of a show um, with, your, with your guitar rather than just sitting still it was getting in my way a little bit and I wasn't using it so I've, I've removed it, I've not unweighed it, I've just unscrewed it and pushed it through um, so it's still there somewhere, but it's it's not in use on this guitar. If I um, plug the guitar in to an amplifier, straight through there, I need to switch the amplifier on as well. So we'll do that. As a tip, a general tip, um, I would recommend plugging your guitar in and making sure you're connected up before switching your amp on. If your amp's on and you've got the lead hanging around and you're trying to plug it in you get a lot of nasty uh, horrible cracks and pops and sounds like that which not only sounds a little bit nasty but you can in a worst case scenario and sometimes cause damage to the, uh, the amplifier particularly if it's a you know an old valve amplifier boutique amplifier so I just recommend making that secure that's connected before you switch your amp on and likewise 
when you finish playing, switch your amp off before you unplug. So I'm plugged in now, the volume's not turned on, so I'm not hearing anything yet. Uh, just one real, real quick tip before I use the amplifier. If you're going to buy an electric guitar, you're going to look at an electric guitar, see if you want to buy it, I would always recommend playing the guitar without it being plugged in and just have a listen to the acoustic sound of the guitar. This won't be very loud obviously because it's, it's not designed that way. And see if you're happy with the acoustic sound of the guitar before you plug it into an amplifier because if it doesn't sound very good on its own without an amplifier you'll struggle to make it sound good no matter what amplifier you use and that, that's a tip for any electric guitar you should try and choose one that you're happy with the sound and the feel of before you even go near an amplifier an amplifier can make it sound fantastic and great and impressive particularly if you're a beginner player and you're not really 100% sure on on what you're listening to or what it should sound like and feel like you hear all the effects and the maybe distortion and things on the amplifier and say wow that sounds that sounds great but just make sure your guitar sounds nice to begin with before you do that so let's roll my volume up now my amp's on I can play through the amplifier um, I'm not going to play a lot but just to show you the difference with um, obviously the volume and roll that on and off to adjust the volume level. I mentioned the switch that um, switches between the two different pickups. We said the, um, the back pickup, or we usually call it the bridge pickup because it's next to the bridge. That's the, um, the one that's sharp attack. Gives you a good punch, it's in your face. It's, uh, it's very strong and bold. If I switch now to the neck pickup, Call it the neck pickup because it's next to the neck. Hopefully you're able to hear. It's more mellow. It's more smooth. Than the bridge pickup. Just as a, a real quick example of why you may have two different pickups and what the different sounds are on the guitar. That's it really about the electric guitar. This particular example is, um, I would describe it as a, a basic entry level electric guitar. The reason I say that, it's a, it's a basic guitar because it's got the basic features that I would expect on, on most guitars, on 9 out of 10 electric guitars. The, the common features, you'd normally expect to have more than one pickup so you've got a bit of variety in sound, um, a volume control. You'd normally expect to have the tone control as well that I chose not to use personally for this guitar. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing what I've done unless you wanted it for a particular reason like I described. I was using this to play only with a heavy metal band where the tone control wasn't of much use to me. So I'd describe it as a basic guitar. I'd also say it's entry level uh, because of the, uh, the price point. You can, uh, you can pay whatever you want for an electric guitar from under a hundred pounds to thousands of pounds. This guitar I bought second hand from, um, from a cash converters I think about five or six years ago. I paid, if I remember, about 160, 170 pounds, which isn't super cheap, but I also got a hard case with the guitar as well, which I wanted because I was using it as a live guitar so I wanted to protect the guitar whilst I was transporting it to and from gigs. Now if you look around, um, a hard case to fit your guitar, you're probably looking at between 50 and 70 pounds to go and buy one of those of a, of a reasonable quality. So with that in mind, the guitar has really only cost me 100 pounds, um, which is to me, that, that's, a, that's a fair price for a guitar like this. Um, it is one of the cheaper end guitars, but as I've already said, the reason I bought it is for me to use personally, live, with a band, playing in front of people. So I'm quite happy to use a guitar of this quality to do that with. You don't need to spend a fortune to go and enjoy yourself, go play with a band, which is enjoyable, it's fun if you get into doing that. Um, again, if you take, if you go and buy a guitar for 
two thousand pounds, you, you fancy shiny the best guitar that your dream guitar. Do you really want to be taking that out to, to pubs and clubs and places where it'll be sat? Maybe you know someone might might try and pinch it. You might get knocked over. Someone might spill a drink on it. Things of that nature. So a basic guitar that didn't cost the earth that I'm not going to be worried about all night long. Gives me a bit of variety of sound and is nicely playable for me. The electric guitar.